Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 5th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier was out hunting for malware and came across an interesting batch file that took advantage of the block input API call. Block input, as you may guess by the name, blocks all user input. So it essentially locks the system and does not allow the victim here to interact with the code. Typically, that's done as an anti-debugging feature. So this way, the user running the code in a debugger wouldn't be able to interact with it, but could also just be to essentially complete whatever action the particular code attempts to complete without any disruption by the user. This particular script, maybe the later, it's a fairly simple script. All it does is it basically deletes your Windows partitions. So I would call it a wiper in that it basically destroys your data and then it displays a uh, a message and doesn't really look like any ransom demand or anything like that. It's really just to outright destroy the computer and uh, tell uh, the user that this is what happened. So likely the attacker also doesn't want that process to be interrupted. If you ever run into this, Xavier points out that a simple alt control delete should give you the option then to cancel. And Microsoft today released an emergency update for Windows Server 2019 and Windows Server 2012 R2 to fix a black screen, slow sign-in, and general slowness on Windows Server if you're using a remote desktop. The problem affects other versions of Windows Server as well, pretty much anything from Windows Server 2012 all the way to Windows Server 2022 and other updates should be made available uh, shortly according to Microsoft. Now remember this is not a security update so it will not be applied automatically. You have to uh, manually download the patch and apply it. And Minerva Labs has a write-up of a malicious uh, Telegram installer. The installer arrives as an exe file which is expected, of course, for an installer, but the exe file here is actually an auto IT script that then is being used to not only create an actual real installer for Telegram, which is not executed, but also install a rootkit. Minerva identifies the rootkit as the Purple Fox rootkit, and it is installed in sort of small snippets to avoid being detected by anti-malware. The write-up also includes indicators of compromise for the samples that Minerva investigated. They also state that they did observe a large number of variants of this scheme that they used different files. So of course, the indicators of compromise here may change at any time. And a couple of years ago, we started seeing what is often referred to as mage card attacks uh, by the group that sort of popularized it, where an attacker is compromising some site that is used to deliver JavaScript to various websites and injecting a keystroke logger into it. Well, we have yet another example of this type of attack. Palo Alto's Unit 42 wrote up an attack against a number of real estate websites. Apparently Sotheby's real estate was hit by this and the victims here were attacked via a customizable video player that apparently is being used on uh, these real estate websites. When setting up uh, the video player, the user, in this case a legitimate user usually, is able to add some custom JavaScript to the video player. Well, uh, here looks like an attacker got either a hold of the account being used to set up the video player or even sort of more backend access that's not really clear from the write-up, but the end effect was that the JavaScript that was delivered with the video player was a keystroke logger and logged whatever the user typed into the site. Now, people typically don't type credit card numbers and such into real estate websites like this, so the data captured is more likely things like email addresses, phone numbers, and names. 
Also interesting, the attacker registered a specific domain name for this attack, cdn dash imgcloud.com. So essentially CDN image cloud, uh, which kind of fits the overall pattern here. So something that wouldn't necessarily show up as suspicious. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.